everyone, from BX257 here again with another vintage G.I. Joe toy review. And today I'll be taking a look at the Hostile Environment Specialist, Airtight. He was first released in 1985 and then re-released in 1986. Strangely enough, uh, despite the small uh, following and actually some rather good characterization in, in both the comic books and the cartoon, he hasn't actually had a proper direct-to-retail re-release ever. This is the only version of him, um, except for the 2008, I believe, G.I. Joe Collectors Club uh, exclusive, which is very hard to find. However, if you're one of those people who have always been wanting another uh, airtight in 21st century articulation, there might be one coming sometime later this year. And here's Airtight out of the packaging. As you can see, he comes with a bright yellow jumpsuit, which is part of his hazmat getup, but I realize that it's that sort of color scheme which turns a lot of people off. However, to me, his army green sort of uh, complements that and gives him that sort of military flair, which many other, uh, I guess, more colorful figures uh, are lacking. His rifle looking object is called a sniffer, which has a separate air hose connected to his backpack. He has molded air hoses connecting from his helmet to his backpack and the backpack itself. Now his weapon is called a sniffer and while some people might think it's, I'll just pop it out here, uh, nothing more than a glorified vacuum cleaner. Well it, it does come with a sort of vacuum cleaner-esque sort of nozzle here. Uh, it's called a sniffer and I tend to think of it as more of a chemical agent detector rather than something which pulls away uh, any type of gases or chemicals and into his backpack. His backpack itself is called a compressor, which I think is where some of this confusion is coming from. I tend to think of his backpack as being more or less a uh, chemical agent detected laboratory, just sort of all crammed in there onto his back, which is, if you think about it, quite impressive, I suppose. While airtight is uh, not exactly uh, hard to find, as a matter of fact, he, he isn't really all that valuable considering his age and considering that there, there aren't really no other versions of airtight just yet. One of the uh, things that make him very hard to complete are these air hoses because it's rather small and they're unique to airtight. Looking into the popularity of the airtight figure among only a very select few people, I realized that it all sort of amounted to what kids back in the 80s thought this thing was or what it did. And I found that the more imaginative, uh, I guess, excuses for what this thing was supposed to do really related back to how much you really liked the figure. If you thought it was like a freeze ray or something like that, then you, yes, you probably liked the figure. If you understood that all it did was a detecting, uh, you know, chemical smells, then, well, you probably didn't like the figure. However, I like the figure quite a lot. I like it by its sculpt and just by itself, really, because yeah, even though it's it's a it's a tiny bit plain and lacking in very fine details, it's because of what is molded, his rather nice and closed helmet, and his respirator on this front, it really does tend to make him look uh, quite a bit like a driver or a pilot, and he very easily complements quite a few, quite a few small uh, vehicles. Such as this, for instance.
Well, that's all the time I have right now. Please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind the scenes photos for these reviews. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. See you then.